it's time to ham up. Okay. Now I gotta really try hard. Shut it down! Somehow it's the best. Neon Chunks Podcast. Neon Chunks! Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to After the Credits, the Yum Chunk Podcast. This is Sean. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. I'm Ryan. I'm Vince. And uh, welcome back to another episode. This is episode four. Um, we're going to be talking about a couple things. Mainly, we're going to be talking about the Netflix series, uh, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Um, before we begin, though, you may have noticed that uh, we have an actual title to our podcast now. It's not ch- just Yum Chunks podcast. After the credits, tell all your friends. We've been in denial for a long time about how bad of a name Yum Chunks is. So you know. <laughs> It's a good name. Give it a chance. <laughs> no, I love it. But, you know, it's at the end of the alphabet, so we had to do something about that. Yeah, um, so for all the uh, podcast hosting places, now you can find us on iTunes and Google Play and wherever wherever else you normally listen to podcasts, you'll find us there now too, and we're listed as After the Credits, a Yum Chunks podcast. So um, now we're so much easier, you can listen to us on your drive to work or on your jog. Morning jog. Yeah. Kids do that, right? When you're working when you're uh, working in the office. Millennials don't work anymore. <laughs> also, you drive home from work. <laughs> Dude, that no, podcasts are illegal. <laughs> Vince, what are you fifty? <laughs> I will um, be forty three yeah. this year. Oh wow! <laughs> well, I can just you... see it in your face. You can't. You've aged. Hey guys, I got they a haircut. Can't, but what do you All think? right, we don't we don't need visual jokes right now. <laughs> you tell me what kind of jokes we need. And we don't need. We'll let the audience decide. Wait, some kind of joke master? I am, uh, I am the joke police. <laughs> all right. What are we? What, uh, what, 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 anyways, what, are we, uh, what are we all been up to? Yeah. What, what's been going on this week since since we last heard from everyone? Where's the everywhere's everyone's stories taking them? So we have to have an order. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Do we have to go in the same order? Like I understand. No, like, however you want. Jump in. Uh, Jump on it, and the water's well, fine. Well, uh, just have souls, guys. I've, as I as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna that's a lot. That's a tall order. Um, I, uh, I I closed Shrek the musical. As is the most significant thing that's going on in my life at the moment. Um, I know what you mean, spe- theater speak, but just out of context, it sounds like you single handedly closed the Broadway run of the <laughs> It will never be seen I, again. I, I, well, you know, I was watching Strike the Musical on Broadway and they didn't appreciate when I stood up and took my pants off and <laughs> spun it around over my head. <laughs> they just fair. said, you know what, we should probably pack it in. We should probably just pack in Broadway as a concept <laughs> from this point on. Closed. <laughs> oh, okay, for those who didn't watch the la- listen to the last one. Uh yeah, I was working on Strike the Musical for my high school, uh in the for the you know, the high school that I teach at so uh and ryan came ryan came to the show i did that was the greatest thing i did last week oh well give us the re- that's something let's talk about shrek the musical even though only one of us saw it <laughs> can we analyze that well sure. i think chewy saw it too oh, that's i true. saw it six plus times he's biased i think probably though mm-hmm. i'm a bit biased i don't know i feel like the the director of that play like it kind of insisted upon itself <laughs> yeah that that so original, so original too. It's a fr- yeah, there you go. First take. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but the Shrek was just fantastic. You should be very happy with how it turned out. It was a lot of fun. Everyone should go see it. There you go. It's uh, direct to you on uh, Google Drive in five different video recordings. I was gonna say everybody nice. should go see it. It's he closed it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was proud of that. Uh, I'm still watching Mad Men. I started watching uh, the re-edit of Arrested Development season four. I'm a few episodes into that. Um, How was the re-edit? Well, I, I only watched the original season four through one time, and that was, it was a while ago. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering what happened in what order to begin with. I remember that they put the episodes. You know, each episode was revolving around a different character, and it kind of time jumped a lot. He calls it a uh, Rashomon style. Oh, huh. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, I, I this is, this takes less energy to to watch. It, it feels a little bit more spoon fed, but you know, it's okay. it's it, it's easier 
but you know it's still still arrested development it's got all i think it has all new uh like uh narration by ron howard oh yeah a lot of, of that make... stuff was not there <laughs> right yeah kind of to make it all make sense and flow but also, it also because feels... it's more episodes than it was before so maybe right it, they needed closers and everything it also does feel like they there's more narration than any other arrested development season because they probably had to lean on that to make certain things make sense because it wasn't designed that way in the first place oh, so. okay but it i don't know it's entertaining I, I think a lot of more people who didn't like season four will like the season just because it's easier to watch. You know? Do you think it's better? Like, do you think it's funnier? Do the jokes work as much and stuff? Uh, the jokes still work for the most part, I think. Um, I ain't going to have to wait until I get to the end of the season. Like, cause I'm only about, I don't know, five or six episodes in. So I, I'm kind of, we'll, 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 we'll see. But again, it's also been a while since I watched the original season four. So I don't, I'm not yeah. sure I'm the best one to judge. But I mean, I mean, I'm enjoying it, you know. Okay, so that's cool. I finished did you celebrate the Quattro de Cinco. <laughs> I, I did, yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Chris, what were you saying? Uh, I was gonna say I finished God of War, the new God of War, this week, and I had a real good time with that. Trying to go through and clean up some post-game content. Might do a podcast about that, maybe. Hmm, intriguing. Would you say it's your favorite game of the year so far? Uh, whew. what else has come out this year? Oh, I don't Sonic, know. This is, a, this, is a, this is a tough year. Uh, so far, I would say probably. Hmm, intriguing. Yeah, I'm. I still need to sink my teeth into. I hope to finish it in the next couple of days and or weeks. Um, but I am also enjoying. I'm enjoying it highly. We'll see my final thoughts once I finish, but. Oh yeah, Sean. I, I well, I, you know, you know, but I was playing through. Uh, I'm playing through the Uncharted trilogy. I'm almost oh, done yeah. with. I, I played them before on PS3, but I, I, I have yet to play Uncharted Four or Lost Legacy because I'm an, an awful friend. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really wanted to do a replay of the original trilogy first. So I'm working through the the remaster, and I'm almost on Uncharted Three, and then I'll get through that and then finally i'll be able to play uncharted 4 and then i can tell you um how good you did or didn't do on it cool yeah i want a full written report explaining every like and dislike you will uh, no that's cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool i have not been up to much new stuff um i have checked out and i recommend others to check out star wars forces of destiny i don't know if anyone's heard of this they're basically two minute little animated snippets um and you can find them all online they're published by disney they're they're almost kind of like the adobe flash style animation so the animation isn't amazing but they remind me of kind of like the clone wars tv show cartoon the um, original one right a little bit that it's less cool than that and less stylized than the gandhi tartatovsky one um but more the tone of the cg um oh. cartoon <laughs> show if that makes sense. Anyways, but it's really cool is because each episode is just completely a different character in all of the Star Wars franchise. So you might have an episode of Luke and Leia talking to Ewoks uh, right after the Battle of Endor. And then you have an episode with Rey on Jakku with BB-8. And then you have an episode of, you know, um, Ahsoka with Anakin during the Clone War. Like, and each one's a two-minute little just, like, chunk. And they're designed for kids for the most part but they're still just kind of entertaining and cool because a lot and they also get a lot of the voice actors so like john boyega and mark hamill and daisy ridley had like are all just their voices and stuff anyways you could watch all of them in like 45 minutes or something online so it's cool you should rec i recommend that yeah that's good i'll check that out john boyega boyega sounds like um somebody's trying to say burger but uh <laughs> with a really <laughs> thick accent i, I think you're thinking of chef boyardee boyga <laughs> Oh, boy, now I'm never gonna not be able to hear that. I want a, I want a, I want a nice boyga for dinner. <laughs> I'd eat some of that boyga. Yeah, that's inappropriate though. <laughs> yeah, wildly inappropriate. I dare you. Anyway, well, thank you for that recommendation, Sean. Speaking of recommendations from you, I finished The Patriot. Oh, you actually started watching it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I told you a friend, a another friends. friend of mine had recommended it a while yeah. back, and I just never followed up on that. So. uh yeah, it was fantastic. It's actually probably just one of my favorite shows ever. Yeah, it's seriously, I don't know why it doesn't get more publicity or why Amazon didn't, you know, market it more or whatever, but it's so good. It's just really good. Um, it's only 10 episodes and every, 
it's it's kind of slow, so I would say give it two episodes, and if you really don't like it, then you probably won't like the rest. But I feel like you're you'll love it after this second episode. So, in any case, yeah. yeah Another fantastic. recommendation: two weeks in a row for that. It's only on Amazon. Too. Yeah, it's on Amazon. So. You gotta have Amazon Prime. Yep. Yeah. Can I log into your account? <laughs> well, yeah, let me give you my login credentials right now. Uh, right. So much for our Amazon uh, sponsorship, no. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, I mean no. Buy your own account, man. <laughs> Um, okay. I'll watch anyone else? Too. Any any other shows, movies, games, books? Um, uh, anything? Let's see. Chewy, I watched the Avengers say. again. I recommend that. Oh, I did too. Uh, yeah, I, I did a second watch through. I actually had a little Marvel weekend. Uh, I had a lot of free time this weekend, and I was just kind of wanted to relax after last week. So I uh, I red boxed Thor Ragnarok, and then I went and saw Infinity War for the second time, and then I Netflix Guardians two. Over the course of the weekend, so oh, nice all little, good. Yeah, it was a good little uh, two. Those day all three fit feature. together really well. I feel they do. Yeah, they do, and it's nice to kind of um, see the connective thread and all the it kind of yeah. how the other two movies feed into Avengers and uh, yeah. and it's also it's also just like seeing such a we we touched on it in our conversation about how the ending of Ragnarok is so optimistic and then just seeing the bleak <laughs> yeah. aftermath during Infinity War, it's such a tonal just shift. Crushed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I when I saw it the nice second time, I definitely thought it stood up. Ryan, did you guys feel the same way for the most part? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Also, I, I I had to go to the bathroom during a different time, so the the, <laughs> the scene that the scene that I missed during my first viewing of Infinity War, I got to I got to watch the second time around. Oh, yeah. that's cool. You like yeah. new content? It's Just like a little the DVD bit. DVD yeah. release before the DVD. <laughs> yeah, I try not to have to go to the bathroom when I'm in, in the movie theater seeing something I haven't seen. So I of course I have to run as fast as I can, which you guys probably have never seen, but. You'll never see me run unless I'm trying. <laughs> oh, to... we, if you, if you've watched a gentle hike, that's I, exactly I what like... I was thinking. <laughs> you really tried hard. I tried. Yeah, I had to. Re- I had to really try hard, but uh, <laughs> but finally got to rest, watch the rest of the movie. So yeah, it de- definitely cool. stood up for the second time. Definitely, I might even see it again before mm. it's out. Yeah, I also think I want to see it again. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, those are yeah, nothing super new, but um couple more recommendations for you check some check some stuff out uh but um let's move on to the main event um so tonight we're going to be talking about um the netflix show uh lemony snicket a series of unfortunate events we'll probably primarily be talking about season two as that just aired though i'm sure we'll delve into season one as well um and as always there's going to be spoilers and because this is an adaptation (laughs) there's probably going to be spoilers for the books as well as maybe even the film none of you about this, whether it was none of you that read the books better spoil how it ends yeah oh, well, I, 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 am, I think matt's yeah. the only one who's read the books i'm just saying that if you are starting to read the books as a listener you may be spoiled for future books um but yes please matt don't spoil it for us who have not read the last couple books i mean i'll um, try <laughs> uh anyways um uh yeah so so yeah it's a netflix show season two uh there was the movie when did the jim carrey movie come out it was like 2006 uh five or six i think so, i'm gonna say 2000 a little while ago yeah something oh, i had i had it up I, uh, let's see we're all at our computers we have the entire infinite knowledge of the world it is 2004 movie. yes oh there you go Directed by Brad Silberling. Anyways, um, so for me, anyway, we'll go around and kind of mention everyone's exposure to the world of Lemmy Swing. I have only ever watched the Netflix show. I never saw the Jim Carrey movie, and I have not read any of the books. So I am just, you know, looking at this from from the show itself. Mm. Um, but I know, Matt, you probably have the most exposure to everything, right? Yeah, I, I started reading the books when uh, Carnivorous Carnival had just been released. Um, I was looking for a book series, and my sister had all of them, and you know, she was like a little kid at the time, so she was super, super into them. She said you should check them out. Um, so I binged through them, and then I read through them as uh, as they were released uh, for the rest of them. And then um, I had to start work- working at the movie theater at the time, so I, I I saw the movie multiple times because I had just gotten into my head that I could see any movie as many times as I wanted. And so even if the movies were good or not, I <laughs> I went and saw Lemony Snicket several times in theaters. So I'm very, very familiar with the series. Cool. What about you guys, Vince? Um, I, I mean, the books came out right like in my, it was like the perfect eight. I was the perfect age for when they started coming out. I read like the first three 
I think. But after that, I kind of just stuck to Harry Potter when I was a kid and didn't didn't read the rest. And did, did you ever see the movie? I did see the movie. I actually liked the movie because um, it it covered only the books I had read, thankfully. Um, but yeah, I I actually when I was a kid, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I thought Jim Carrey was really really good as Olaf. I just I was always a big Jim Carrey fan, so. I don't know. I thought he did a pretty good job with the character, and he's definitely a very good like physical actor to kind of be that character. Mm-hmm. Cool, Ryan. Have, have you? I don't. I don't remember ever reading the books when I was. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, so Matt's sister also got me into reading the series. I read the first three. Oh, okay. Um, and I kind of lost interest, so I stopped reading them. But uh, um, but yeah, I didn't. I never saw the movie. Okay, what? so mainly the show as well. Yeah. And Chris, have you done anything other than watch the show? Uh, no, I'm a virgin in that sense. All right. Why did you have to phrase it like that? You didn't have to. I feel uncomfortable. That was a choice. <laughs> uh, cool. All right, so at least we have we have varying levels of expertise. So I think that's kind of cool. We all have different um, uh, takes coming into this. Hopefully that provides some, you know, some well-rounded insight. Um, any case, though, what did everyone think of the show specifically? How much did they like <laughs> uh, uh, Netflix's yeah. show? Or dislike it? Maybe maybe people hate it, and we decided to choose something we all hate. I don't. That would be weird. But um, well, uh, let me just say, I I really really like the show. I there's a lot of different things I like about it, but I think overall there's just something super unique and. Um, Unlike anything else, uh, I really like the writing, the performances, the visuals, the art direction. There's so much I like about the show. It's, it's one of my favorite shows currently, you know, in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, I, I like it a lot. I'm actually with you 100%, Sean. Uh, unique is like the, the exact word that I would use to describe it. It just, even though it doesn't feel like it does much unique, it, it as a whole, it just feels so fresh and unique. I don't know. But yeah, the acting's fantastic. It's just a really bizarre kind of story. That so, was yeah. what was actually stopping me cuz I watched the first two episodes like right <laughs> when the show came out and then I was kind of like, "Eh, I'm just not really feeling this." And so I actually didn't watch seasons 1 and 2 until about I don't know, 3 weeks ago maybe. And then I binge-watched all of them. And so once I kind of start started getting with the episodes it picks up i would say about halfway through i don't know maybe season one for me and then it kind of mm-hmm. it it really gets it gets pretty good yeah but for the first couple episodes it kind of felt a little too similar to the 2004 movie for me yeah i uh i get what you say about similar but it's also just there's there's not a lot of meat on the bones of those first three books because they're real short you can read any of them in like an hour Um, but I, I, in general, I enjoy the series. Uh, there's things I like, I think there's things I think that the series does really well compared to the other versions of this book or movie. There's also some things I don't really like about it in comparison. Um, I, I, I I remember liking the movie for aspects of it, but overall, like as a fan of the book, I was mostly disappointed in the movie. Um, and I, and I remember having a conversation with Ryan about this around the time. Cause I remember Ryan saying like, yeah, the, every book's the same. I'm kind of burnt out on this. And I kind of felt a little bit like that. And the movie kind of, um, accentuates that it kind of, the fact that you can take three of them and, and shove them all into, you know, a two hour runtime. Um, but I, I feel like the show kind of has the opposite problem a little bit for some of the earlier uh, books because every book gets two episodes. So basically what they're doing here is they're making a feature film for every book in the series. And the first three books don't need that much screen time. So they had to invent a bunch of stuff. And I think the pacing kind of suffers in some of the books because of that. I think particularly the reptile room and then um, uh, Ursat's elevator. I think some of those and a couple of the other ones, I feel like, okay, we didn't need two episodes for this. We could have gotten, we could have gotten the point across. Um, and then there's a couple other random little things. I, I, the, the thing about the books is that you never see anything in the story outside of the Baudelaire's point of view. 
where the the TV show is cutting to other points of view constantly, um, which I think is interesting. But I also think it 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 lessens the mystery a bit of what's going on outside of their lives. Like it it kind of feels like you hit a turning point in the book series where you start to realize all of these books are connected in some way and there's this bigger conspiracy going on and the netflix show implies that from episode one and it kind of lessens the impact of some of those reveals later on um which could be good or bad but i i i'm, I'm worried about season three for particular reasons uh, i'm i chris is really adamant that i don't spoil anything but i feel like this is going to have a problem of too much buildup for not enough payoff in season three Whereas I think the books had enough build up to where the payoff is equal. I think this is gonna I I I think unless they make some major changes to what happens in season three, I think it, it's gonna disappoint a lot of people. Um so I'm a little worried. I'm 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 a little worried. That's kinda where I'm at right now. Cool. Brian, what in general, you I, I think we've talked briefly about it in the past. Yeah. It sounds like you liked a lot of it. Uh, yeah, I'm a huge, definitely a big fan of the show, Sean. I think everything you said, I agree with. Uh, Matt, I want to kind of touch on something you said about having like the multiple perspectives of different characters earlier yeah. on. Um, I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I think it's like a double-edged sword for me. Uh, I see what you mean about, well, at least from re having read the books, I don't really know where it was going. And yeah. all I saw was just the Baudelaire kids kind of going through the same thing over and over and over again. And that was one of the reasons why I lost interest in the series. Um, and the show definitely suffers from that too, right? Like you said, we get two episodes <laughs> per book. So we have to keep suffering through the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I think by splitting it up with multiple perspectives, it kind of lessens the doldrum of having to relive these same events over and over again. Um, and I think that's my biggest critique of this series is that um, if you've seen, I guess, two episodes, you've seen the entire series. Mm. If it weren't for those uh, alternative perspectives, right? Right. And I think they handled, uh, I think they handled a lot of those perspectives well in the first season with the bait and switch, because even me going mm -hmm. like, like, whoa, are their parents going to be alive in this version? That's a pretty big departure. And, um, and that bait and switch was really true to the tone of the series. That feels like definitely something that they would have done in the books had it been thought of or had they been able to. So I thought that was clever, but I also feel like some of the other side stories are a little, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them. Well, Matt, in the books, um, well, anyone's read is because one of the reasons I think uh, this kind of stands out, and one of the reasons I think it just kind of infused with why I like it is is the and generally is the writing, but um, a lot of the times is how the narrator interacts with the story, and yeah. you know, Patrick Warburton being just the perfect like character or actor for this role at least i i think he's great um but just just narratively and thematically how it constantly plays and how is that done in the books is is the narrator as big a character a role i mean lemony stick is obviously a quote-unquote character but is it and does he interact or does it interact on the same level well it's interesting because he when he's in the show he you see him like in the foreground of things that are going yeah. on and never no one ever really is like acknowledges that he's there so i kind of i kind of in the show just assume that he's not like he's he's kind of fourth wall breaking and nobody else can see him and he's not actually taking yeah part of it. um it's it's implied in through illustration in each book like you get a, an illustration at the beginning and at the end of each book that shows that he was behind the scenes somewhere watching the events unfold as he was writing it but um but he doesn't really interact with anyone that he does however when he goes on his narrations he'll go on these tangents you know and, and so yeah that's to me the bigger thing like especially it's like this phrase means this mm -hmm. or more commonly and it's it's almost like he's a character in that scene even though they're not interacting per se yes his and that, lines are playing off of those characters lines yeah and i and that's one of the i think the things that they that's strong in the netflix adaptation versus the movie is that they they got that aspect of him kind of being present not so much yeah. that he interacts but he's yeah. present at any given time his personality is present and I think the Netflix show does that better than the film, because that okay, is cool. that is an aspect of the books. Cool. So yeah, going off of like especially the narrator, like I said, to me one of the reasons I really just think um, the show stands above, I think maybe a lot of others that maybe are going for that same audience or at least the same tone is the writing and and 
I mean specifically the dialogue because I do agree that it gets repetitive and that that aspect of the writing, the structural part, isn't anything I think amazing. But I think just the dialogue is so smart. And I mean, and I was thinking about it, I was like, why? And I feel like it's smart for all ages. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Like it it never comes across as pandering. It never comes across as too, um, you know, heady or or pretentious. It's the right level of like, of sarcasm and snark but also wit and cleverness and poking fun of itself and other, like it just it's a really good balance uh and then of course just like wordplay and puns and just constant callbacks and stuff like every line spoken line i think is just really well crafted i uh i i like that you mentioned that it's not pandering because I, I remember my sister mentioning that when she was a kid reading them and it, 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 that's kind of one of the strengths i think and one of the major themes is that um it 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 kind of says, "Hey, we should listen to children every once in a while," and and it, it's maybe over the top at some point, but these books really make it a point to show that a lot of times the adults don't really know what they're doing, <laughs> and and uh, and <laughs> that that's something that I realize as I get older is that <laughs> like a lot of people around me are faking it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in different different situations in life, you go like, "Oh, like when you're a kid, it seems like the adults have all the answers, and then you're an adult, and everyone's kind of like." everybody's just still g going about it but and, and it also you know kids are affected by the horrible things that go on that are the results of, of adults actions so i like that it centers it around how children are important they have something to say and it it doesn't talk down to them that the, it's it's not pandering and and that i think the writing complements the themes of the book really well in that in that regard that that's a really interesting point because i remember having a conversation with ryan about his favorite character in the entire series is poe <laughs> po <laughs> <Dang is, it. laughs> he really he gets behind poe 100 percent of the way he's, he's hoping to see him take it all Wait, the way to the finish line chris i'm glad you brought that up now i can talk about how much i hate the show because of that character <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, he kind of epitomizes what, I don't know, a major theme of the show, right? That, uh, adults don't listen to children, right? Or right, at least, yeah. how, at least how children perceive adults, mm -hmm. uh, that they're not being listened to and they are idiots. Um, yeah, uh. I hate the character. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it, it's a frustrating character, but I think it's necessary because you, you mentioned how it, it's at least perceived by kids how adults see them. But I think there there is some truth to that. There's something I was reading not that long ago about like the the because I said so mentality that a lot of parents have that um, that, you know, kids like to ask why they like to question every single thing ever. And a lot of parents don't have the time or the energy or the patience to kind of say look there's a reason why we have to have rules there's a reason why things have to be this way there's a reason why things have to be this you know kids are smarter than i think a lot of people give them credit for and if you know parents who take the time and go here's why rather than oh because i'm in charge because i said so and i think that a character like poe is is really the like all-encompassing idea of that it's like look i'm i've been put in charge of your like so what if you don't know any of these so-called called guardians? Like you gotta, you just gotta do what I say because it's the law and it's the rule and it's and and it's how it goes. So it's a very frustrating character, but I think it's also really effective. I think the the perspective as a whole in the show is just so masterfully crafted. Because I mean, another character that you're just built to like put your your you know so much into was Jacques Snicket, right? Like the show does such a good job of teasing him as like some some out for the kids right like he's mm -hmm. the hero he is a potential out for these kids from these terrible situations and then you know eventually his death just proving you know his heroes aren't all they're made up to be right mm -hmm. well i also just think that it it's a common theme just like you know bad things happen for no reason sometimes like like just because it's like a you know a, a book series like the good guys aren't always going to win you know it's they're unfortunate events. Like sometimes that's just, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I do think that as much as that is, they play into that, like lean completely into that and it's, and it's good. I think it's good. I think also there's a certain understanding too, um, at least, you know, maybe, maybe a little more subtle, but that, 
Well, yeah, every story is a series of unfortunate events. That's what stories are. Like, mm. it wouldn't be a story if everything yeah. just worked right. out well Conflict. for all the time. So I think at a certain level, it's it's about just, like, the realization that, yeah, life is going to suck. And life's things are going to happen that suck. And this is – that's just kind of being a part of it. And it's it's not so much – I wouldn't say it's so far as, like, oh, it's a part of growing up and this is about them becoming adults. Um, but it's just about becoming, you know, more – more okay with that i think um and learning that you know that doesn't that's not a reason to just give up um because yeah as much as jack snicket but then then also at the very end uh, olivia what was her name the the librarian too like yeah there's like these oh yeah things are gonna work out or even um 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 uh buster bluth like he didn't <laughs> die but like they just felt like they're like they had it out right there like he was willing to but he's just a coward and yeah, you know, people aren't just always these kind of idealized versions. Right. That that kind of brings me back to the point about how like it's just kind of every episode is just a repeat of the of the last one. Even yeah. sometimes these addition the additional content they included with like their savior characters, it's well, we know what's going to happen as soon as that character is introduced. And as yeah. much as I love 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 the show, the characters are fantastic, all the just the visuals are super appealing and fun. I just, I can't, I, I honestly, I hate the content of the show. I, <laughs> every episode is going to be the same thing, and I know how it's going to end. I'm going to enjoy the ride, and I get that they're making these things happen in unfortunate ways, because that's the whole theme of the show, and it's part of the theme and motif and blah, 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 but I just don't like it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I see what I, I definitely I agree with you on some level, Ryan, because one thing I definitely feel when watching the show is a, is fatigue. I feel fatigued while watching the show. Maybe <laughs> it's because I'm invested with the characters, but sure. also because the show has done such a good job of letting me know that once again, nobody is safe in a sense. So they'll build up a character that you may like, but for some reason, Poe is the only one that lives. So it's... Like I feel, I feel I, I'm I'm with you to some degree on what you're saying, but yeah, I think the biggest flaw is the repetitiveness. And to me, the repetition is you know it's not great. But I think more so to me, it deflates a lot of the emotional invest, event, investment I would normally have, not just in the characters, but just in the in in the things and events that happen. So like a lot of these kind of big mystery box kind of things where you're like, oh, they're getting closer to the truth, like nothing is sacred which in some ways is a really good thing right they're not they don't care if there's some secret book that's going to have all the answers burn it you know what i mean or this little tool that'll tell them everything throw it away like but i've come so uh, used to that that i know it's going to happen so i'm not like there's not as much of that emotional high because i'm i've already tempered it because i know it's it's right you kind of tell yourself okay don't get too invested Yeah, yeah i can i can see that yeah it's interesting that you mentioned the, uh, the the kind of the mystery box aspect because like I I actually was thinking about this recently is that the the uh, the Last Jedi Force Awakens kind of conversation if we want to call that dumpster fire um, is it's it's a bit similar where you got you have a movie that has all these what's this and what's that and who's this person related to and then in the next one it's kind of yeah it doesn't doesn't really matter it's not you know like yeah and it, and that's sort of what when that conversation kind of came out that it kind of reminded me of of a series of unfortunate events because it, it it is a lot of that in this series this series this book series has made up a lot of that kind of thing where it's like there are a lot of um false there leads are, there are a lot of false leads there's a lot of red herrings which i love that they even make a joke about in one of the episodes um because they know it's self-aware that like they're purposely planting things yeah. that aren't going to go anywhere, and that's yeah. that kind of that kind of leads me that that's sort of why I mentioned earlier that I'm worried about season three because um, it it's really ramping up the the perceived significance of a lot of things in the series that I I'm I'm not sure if are going to pay off. Is I think you know for people who haven't read it, I think 
it's well kind of be... kind of going into season three as it is one of the driving forces in this season was the vfd thing right it was like yeah. what the and I, I i thought it was cute how there were so many different versions of that acronym just yeah that persist yeah. in this world everywhere mm-hmm. and i found that really funny but and then you get to the full reveal that it's like volunteer fire department right right and, and you're just like wait how does that apply to a super secret <laughs> spy network <laughs> and they, yeah, they, they I, even have a throwaway line right it's like well it's not always physical fire sometimes it could be like you know the more metaphorical types of fires and stuff right. like that but yeah that's a pretty catch-all uh department right there if that's the case and that's, yeah and it definitely is playing to like your expectations you, you, these I, these idealized versions of of things characters and in this case you know whatever societies and um uh, aren't always going to live up to what you build them up to be. And I think another reason, another way that kind of plays into that. And I think, uh, I think this is intentional as well Is I don't know if how much this comes across in the book of the movies, but the show is supposed to be pretty modern, I think, but it obviously visually is, is reminiscent of the past in a lot of ways. It looks yeah. like it'd be something from the thirties or maybe there's parts that are kind of from the seventies or whatever, but Oftentimes when we, especially with like the 30s, 40s and 50s films or television that takes place then, it, it's very romantic and it seems very clean and just like, oh, it's a fun time to be in. I don't, I think in every case, every, every version of the past, quote unquote past in these episodes and stories, it's not idealized. Like they're, they're dark and grimy places and they're lonely mm-hmm. and they're desolate and weird like there's the hotel episode or the 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 Ertzat, Ertzat's elevator is maybe the cleanest I suppose, but even that was very just weird and off putting and again lonely, um, and it's the same thing where you're you're we idealize these past you know versions or you know the ideas and they're not I, I like they're making a point to show that they're not as clean as we expect them to be. Yeah, I really like on that note. I really like the clash of the different. Uh the different aesthetics uh and i i I remember noticing this in the movie too and i I think they're on a on a somewhat related unrelated note the there was a lot of overlap between the movie and the netflix shows production teams like a lot of the art design and a lot of uh just the behind the scenes there's definitely a lot of overlap i remember reading but um but yeah you see stuff like horse-drawn carriages and like get oil oil (laughs) lamps but then also people drive cars but then also there's like some people have computers, but computers from yeah. different eras. And then there's like, they go to a convenience store. So yeah, like, it's a quirky <laughs> universe. Let's just say that. Yeah, and and it, it works somehow. And I think that's a, a big strength of the art design is that it somehow feels like a weird, like it, it, it feels like a real universe somehow. Yeah, I don't know if, if you guys watched Legion, but it reminds me of that. Uh, where oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole show yeah. takes place in some unknown decades, 70s, 80s? right now who knows uh so it definitely reminded me of that it's actually i'm glad you brought up legion because it's very like where legion has a very unique and polished like i think both of the shows have a very polished look to them but legion has a very bright and vibrant polished look to it where the the series of unfortunate events has a very vibrant but like dusted over darkish tint to it like but it's still but they're both like very clean right and things like that well, this is something that I think just in general, um, I was going to pose to everyone. So why do we, why do you, why do you, you guys think that this book series has, it's, I mean, it's been revisited. It's twice now as some sort of film or television adaptation and, and been successful in that regard where, especially during the early aughts period or the late nineties, when all these kids fantasy kind of, you know, IPs were being released, um, especially in the wake of Harry Potter and a lot of them just kind of petered out or just were lackluster or boring or the film ad- adaptations just sucked. Why do you guys think that what's been unique about the Lemony Snicket that that seems to make it stand apart? Is there something or do you think it's just a weird kind of coincidental ha- happenstance? I think it has a lot to do with whose hands it's in. I think Netflix is, at least recently, they've been pretty much on their game, on their A game when it comes to like, adapting uh, books Mm -hmm. and movies and stuff into TV shows, they were able to take their time with with the series, as opposed to having just one two-hour movie where you try to cram in as much as you can. They knew what they were doing. They knew that they would have a set number of episodes 
for this many number of books, and they knew that they would span it over several seasons. So I think that there's a lot more... It, they were focusing more on quality and quantity, and they they knew... I think it's just the balance. It's about balancing all those kind of factors, and I think just having it on Netflix just is is really the, the reason why it was so successful. I mean, well, kind of yeah, playing I mean, off that, I think another part of it in the, in the, that same vein is Neil Patrick Harris, who I think is an executive producer on the show, a big pusher of that show, the main reason it happened. He just seems very into, you know, making it work. He, he puts in, it's, if, I could feel his effort when I watch those yeah. episodes. So I feel like he yeah. is a, a, a pivotal part of why that show has seen success. Yeah. Well, I agree with both, both what uh, Vince and Chris said. But Sean, are you asking why did it, this particular IP make a return? Yeah, I mean that's part of it. I guess I mean the movie. I if you're like the movie maybe wasn't successful. Maybe you could claim that the movie was one of those that kind of seemed to peter. But there's obviously something about the IP that drew people back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. That's actually I think that's what question. I was kind of asking about. I mean, like, I were, think... were people asking? For, for a series of unfortunate events to be rebooted. Yeah, that's my point. Is like it's right. something that I wouldn't have thought to. I wouldn't have either because after the movie came out and it didn't spawn a sequel, I kind of thought we weren't going to get another one. I, I have kind of like overall cynical feeling towards the movie because Hollywood has this tendency, like, okay, they they, they learn the wrong lessons from things. Like, all right, we Harry Potter's real big. We made a Harry Potter movie. It's it's super popular. That means we need to find every young uh, like children's fantasy novel series and we need to adapt them and they they don't they don't look at why harry potter's popular um and so i, I kind of thought that we weren't and, and there were a lot of those kind of movies like, yeah, like spider what chronicles and they they dragged out that, Narnia actually. again and yeah. that kind of stuff um yeah. but uh i think i think with series of unfortunate i think that's different as far as like the popularity of the books in the first place i think um i i don't think it's a coincidence that like it's like you said, late nineties, early two thousands. I think there was like I remember reading that like there was a rise in sales after nine eleven because it like this book. I've I've read a lot of articles about how this book is popular with kids having to cope with things. Like this is this that I, I've talked to people who like who were as kids they read them and said oh like this helped me you know get over a parent's divorce or this helped me get over a loss of a family member or this helped be because the books are real with kids. Like I was saying earlier, really, they don't talk down yeah. to kids. And I think probably just as a society at that time, a lot of people are like, I don't want, like, I, I don't want someone to tell me it's, everything's going to be okay if it's not going to be. And, and I think a lot yeah. of people probably that, that probably spoke to a lot of people personally, just like, cause everybody has strife in their life. Everybody has trauma that they go through. And, I, and if you go through it at a young age, it's nice to have something comforting and saying, you know, like, yeah, it sucks, but you're going to be okay. You know, like, things aren't, you know, aren't going to be the same, but you'll live through it, you know. What do you guys think is the possibility that Netflix saying this, this one-off Nickelodeon movie that didn't work out, that's based off of another series, you know? What is what do you think the possibility is they could take something like Avatar? <laughs> That's not happening. And, and do another animated series? No, I'm not saying an animated series. But what if they were to like take each book and make it into like a live action series? But would it would it be Ooh. worth the effort if they weren't going to change things? It's already Whoa. a very successful animated show that cons- that consists of many uh, episodes. Like, I feel like how would they change things enough to warrant doing it if it wasn't a movie? Oh, I don't think also, that's what they're worried we, about. We also had to wait 13 years before they tried another live action Lemony <laughs> Snicket. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I ask again in 13 years why it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Avatar ended in 2008. It's going to be its 10 year anniversary. When you know, did the, the Shyamalan movie came out? When did the Shyamalan film come out? 2010. All right. Well, check back that's in 2023. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan, were you going to say? Sound like you you, you had you were going to say something about kind of their popularity or. Or why you think they might be as? Oh, you know, uh, as I don't know. I, I I was more just clarifying your question, but I guess I would uh, want to. Okay. I would I would look to the producers or whoever was the inspiration for bringing this uh, series out of the grave. 
Yeah, no, I definitely think you know, it'd be curious to see. I guess that's kind of my point. It's like, okay, you're a big Netflix executive or whoever. Hey, we need we're going to adapt a TV series or a, a work. Yeah. Where do we go to? And you know, for them to choose that. And I guess that's kind of the heart of my question, I suppose. Um, I guess that's another question I have too. Is like, so would I? I think the you know, inarguably, the books are are children's books. But would you call this a kid show? uh i would say it's an all ages show i think there's things in there for kids and i think the darker elements really speak to adults as a whole and maybe glossed over by kids yeah why do you think like because like i said i never really read the books i was aware of them but there's just never something that interests me and maybe that's just my own fault for not giving them a chance but uh i definitely get the sense that the books would not appeal to the same audience, well, to the same white audience. Well, I think Chewie I brought up that. earlier that, like, that the element, correct me if I'm wrong, Chewie, but that, sure. that whole element in the first season with the parents, Will Arnett and What's Her Face, yeah. that wasn't necessarily in the books. That was handled differently in the show, right? It wasn't in the books at all. Yeah, but I don't think I that, mean, that was, a, that was the, a much darker element to that season. It was right? darker, but, I, well, I felt like that was just more like, pointing to a bigger global like story and mythology behind it. And I don't know if that really appealed wasn't like the drawing factor for me in any case and other people I've talked to. I don't know. I was just, uh, I'm just curious. What well, you I remember think. when I was watching the first season, I was like, ah, oh, I hope they get back to the kids. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. It was, yeah. and they did yeah. the wrong kids, but yeah. And the, the, the quagmires who are the, they're, those are the real parents of are introduced in, um, in the the austere academy but you know by the time you meet them again you experience everything from the bottler's perspective in the books strictly so by the time you meet the quagmires they're like oh yeah our parents just died oh cool ours did too you know there's not this like there's not this bait and switch there's or or the implication that there's this big spy world going on in the back you don't know anything about any background stuff until um until ersatz elevator and sorry this is a little off topic but um that ersatz elevator was like that's the first indication in the book series like strong indication that there's something else going on besides these kids being bounced around to different guardians you get to that scene where they find out they find the secret tunnel in the elevator and it leads them back to the remains of their house and they're like what it what and as a reader you're like what is going on right now like why (laughs) why are we back to the other what why are they referencing the other books at all you you think because by that point it's there's a there's a, yeah. a repetitious there, there's a there's a formula to the books it's like yeah, go, go to, the, to it yeah they go to this wacky uh guardian wacky stuff happens someone dies cool next book and that's the first indication book seven that there's any kind of connectivity between any of these books and that there's going to be a larger arc that connects everything and that there's this secret organization if you go back and read them there's smaller hints that they're dropped in hindsight but um and that's kind of what, what i mean about like from episode one of the Netflix series, they're like, no, there's, there's spy stuff happening. There's secret stuff going on and there's the organization and, and it, 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 it changes the tone of everything, I think. But I also feel like that's, that's kind of more fun for if you have read the books, because I'm like, oh, they're like, they're going for it. Like they're, this is, this is stuff they're, they're going for it, you know? I don't know if that made sense, but all right, Chewy, <laughs> Chewy no spoilers, but or I don't know, Vince. Did, did you say you finished the whole series when you were growing up? He said he read the first three, didn't he? All right, no spoilers, but who do you guys think that uh, that that girl was in the final shot? I thought it was Beatrice. I, I guess Beatrice who. I don't know the person they mentioned. Beatrice. She's the person that Lemony Snicket was in love with, and I. And who stole the oh, sugar so, bowl so from their, Esme? So their mom is Beatrice. Their mom? Yeah. Oh, Beatrice is the Baudelaire I mom. That. I don't. I don't oh. think that's been revealed yet. No, it is. They make, when did it? Was it? I did not get that revealed. They make a. I think uh, Lemony Snicket brings it up in the flashback. I think it's all handled in that final episode of the second season when it's like flashing back to him at the masquerade party and stuff like that. I think it's all revealed there. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't, but I definitely did not. There is no indication. There was no association in my mind between Beatrice and her being the mother of the Butlers. 
Well, then there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Ryan or Vince. I don't know. I didn't get that, but uh, I didn't pay as close to the game. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I also, and that's one of the things that was confusing for me because, again, the kids didn't see it, so it didn't happen in the books. So I don't yeah. remember who that is supposed to be alluding to. I think that is, I think that is who it's supposed to be, but. You know, it, it's one of those things that they tweaked for the series. So, I, I'm well, like, I mean, even if it's if it is or isn't their mother, that I still think it, that's who that woman they showed is because they didn't say who that woman was, but that's who I just thought she was. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, maybe she's completely. I mean, otherwise, I think she's just like a completely new character, unknown, which is not like then. Yeah, hey, there's another character. Great, the the girl from Girls is in it now. Um, maybe maybe call me again wrong call me on my bs if i'm wrong we'll do that that. Uh, but didn't they also because i have a theory on who she could be but didn't they also bring up that there was a sister to the snickets Uh uh-huh i i think it might be her Oh, maybe oh maybe i don't know that's true i don't know i don't remember specifically but i think that sounds familiar yeah could be um uh yeah i don't know i'm not sure like i i think i get what matt's saying too about just kind of like not that i think i'm going to be disappointed but i do feel like um the plot you know little plot strings tying everything together aren't like going to be hopefully what draws me through the rest of this season yeah series i feel like it i feel like knowing the episodic tv format they know that they need to have things that are going to pull people to the next episode and if you just adapted them straight, you you you'd fatigue yeah. you'd fatigue yourself out. You'd go, oh, okay, it's yeah. another, it's a this again, this again, this again, and and yeah, I'm worried that those those plot strings are not gonna be satisfying. Yeah, well, another see, thing though. too, yeah, another thing that I I, I just um, really enjoy coming back to is we talked briefly about the performances and and Neil Patrick Harris. But I think uh, I, th- I don't think it could really could be understated. I think he's just great, and like I do think he I like the Baudelaire children, but I, they really aren't given a lot to do acting wise or personality wise. Mm-hmm. Like they do have a personality, but it's a very specific thing, and that's what they are. And they're fine, and they're likable, and especially as children characters. And if you were a child, I could see myself, you know, wanting to be them or you know, whatever. But I think the like that really just rounds out the show and just like provides everything else is Neil Patrick Harris and Count Olaf. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know how much that's in the other works as well, but I just think in this one, in in the TV show, it's, he's fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I I think him and Patrick Warburton, you know, they they carry this beast of burden on their backs pretty heavily. Like they, if it wasn't for them, the show would not be nearly half as entertaining. I think, it's breaks between those two characters that really like they pull you back in. I mean, well, my favorite parts were when Patrick War- Warburton would show up on screen because I felt like I was being a chance to gain more information than mm. the actual story was giving you. Because, like you said, a lot of the stories are the same and they play out the same and they don't offer lots of this mystery. But whenever Lemony Snicket's on the screen, a lot of the mystery starts to unfold. And on the other side, I feel like Neil Patrick Harris also aids a lot to the younger crowd in a sense too, while also still still playing to the older crowd. And I I think one of my favorite jokes that he's maybe done a couple times in the show, but it's like he realizes his outfit is just really stupid, and then like he he's he's one hundred percent sure because then the Baudelaire children are like, oh no, it's Count Olaf, and he gets like all he gets the sweats going right. He's like, oh god, they're gonna find me out. And then when they don't, because adults are idiots in this universe, he even he's shocked, right? He's visibly shocked. He's like, "Wait, what? You didn't recognize me?" Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, if, that's yeah. If if we're talking about strong points, I, I uh, is casting. I really think that uh, Lucy Pancha as uh, as Miss Gwaller is is is. Oh yeah, a she's definitely huge standout. Yeah. She was one of my favorite characters in the series, but I think they got her casting perfect, and I think that's one. That's like one of my favorite things about season two is her and neil patrick harris playing off of each other i think yeah. their 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 chemistry is fantastic yeah i agree I, and i think to both of those characters in both 
just in general talked about earlier how you're saying that like all the adults are pretty stupid or they pander to the children or they don't listen to the children but i think one of the reasons for me anyways um count all off and esme are so compelling and why i like them as characters is because they actually don't and i think that's why it's so like I hate Poe so much more than Olaf because Olaf is awful and despicable and you know what he wants, but he never treats the Baudelaire children as stupid. Like he'll call them stupid and stuff, but he respects them. And they like, Mm -hmm. he's the only one who sees when they're doing stuff and they're the only one who sees through them. Like there's a mutual respect there. So that, that it's less about just like adults in general and children in general. And it's more just like, I, I, I don't know if I could place it down specifically, but I just really appreciate that dynamic where it's like he is actually he's he's dumb and silly, and stupid, but he's actually he's way more aware than most adults and he's willing to manipulate them. I like he he disrespects and doesn't care about the other adults. He uses them um, because he knows he can, but he actually understands and like actually sees the Baudelaire's as as more his equal. I don't yeah, know. I absolutely. thought that was just like a really interesting, unique kind of yeah. I think it was like dynamic. Was it Carnival? I think is the one where like you find out he's he's like onto him the entire time. Yeah, and that and that's a great little moment too. Yeah, he, he if he if he was as stupid as every other adult, and he wouldn't see them as the thorn in, in his side that he does, and that's that's really fun. I did I did like that throwaway joke in the the very first episode of the new season with uh, Sunny, where it's just like. They they address the fact that it she grew right. It's just yeah, like oh, funny. what happened to the baby? Eh, more of a grew. more of a toddler now. In these three hours we were sitting on this bench, she seems to have grown a lot. Yeah. Um, also, is it just me or something? Like, there's something weirdly uncanny about a lot of the sunny shots because it's a it's a real baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting borderline fake baby talk here, but um, like <laughs> there's the like the. <laughs> When they have the specific kind of CG stuff, like it's, I don't know, there's something like weird about it. Is it just me? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's weird for sure. Put all their budget into the set design and not into (laughs) Sonny's face. Into fake babies. I mean, which really, I think if if American Sniper proved anything, they need to triple (laughs) their budget on the fake babies. Like, it's not just the crazy CG stuff when she's, like, doing superhero whatever junk, but it's sometimes just, like, even, like, whatever child they got to play that, her, that, the face just seems very, like, CG. When I, when I don't think it is all the time, most of the time it's probably not, but even just, like, little close-up shots of her, it looks like they, like did something to it <laughs> but not in a bad way no. sean that's how babies look babies are awful looking <laughs> i've been saying this the whole time babies are terrible looking just like her expression is just like a baby shouldn't make that expression no baby should be able to make that expression <laughs> no all right well. I mean, i've been around babies recently given my current um life situation let's call it a and... predicament it's more of a tragedy. How are you yeah. going to get out of this one, Vince? It's your series of unfortunate events. Oh, uh, do they make those faces, though? They like, do I have an enormous seen... fortune. <laughs> and I'm trying to kill their parents in order to get it. Oh. Uh, that's that's morbidly that dark. unfortunate. <laughs> They're to some lions. Uh, cool. All right, well, uh, does anyone else have any other thoughts? Anything else we didn't touch on in our unfortunate talk i mean over events. overall with the set design and i am just so involved in this mystery right now like even that final episode where i'm not an idiot obviously the kids are going to survive <laughs> that cliffhanger <laughs> but it like oddly it's just like oh i, I need to know right i need to know mm-hmm. how how are they going to survive but even that little thing yeah. there the the fact that it's an actual literal cliffhanger is just like <laughs> that <laughs> that kind of comedy is yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just it's just yeah. full of that kind of comedy that is almost dumb it's just yeah, like exactly. on the border it's, of just like a bad pun, almost, but, it's, but it's not it's just clever enough to be entertaining and and then yeah, and then yeah. going back to that scene and what you guys were just talking about like that that scene where he turns around and then you realize he's like nah, i freaking knew right like that was like I mean, it should have been obvious, but to me, it kind of, I was like, God damn it, he knew. How do you know? <laughs> How did he recognize their dirty hair? <laughs> right. That's my point, is that, like, he, like he's not an idiot. He's not another adult who just doesn't, they, he has one eyebrow, and he has a tattoo. You must be Count Olaf. Like, just like these. 
I just, yeah. God, I hate the adults in the universe so much. <laughs> That's the only thing. Like, and Poe's only... wife is awful, too. Like, God, man, they just know how to write awful people. <laughs> but I'm fully, so season three is supposed to be the final season. It's going to cover the rest of the books. I assume in the same format, two episodes per book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am I'm excited for that. They were I believe they were doing the the new trend of just filming it almost immediately after season two, yeah. so, to save on the toddler growing up any more, and the kids and everything. So hopefully well, they, uh, it won't the, be too long. The very next episode is Slippery Slope, and that's my favorite of the books, and it's also the longest. Um, I there there's one less book for season three as there is for season two. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually did three episodes for Slippery Slope because there's a lot of – that's the one that, that that really focuses on the VFD. Because they were on their way to VFD headquarters, I think, at the end of – Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that is covered in that one. And I, I'm, I'm really excited, if nothing else, for that book being on screen. And, I, and I'm, all, I'm a little bit – I'm grateful and I'm a little bit surprised that we got this far. I, I, I thought, you know, they, they did season one and we only got – you know, season one was made up of the three books that we had already seen in the movie, plus one more. And I I was like, man, I really hope they continue with this. I really hope we get to see the rest of the books on screen because that'll be so much fun. So I'm, 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 I love that we've got that we made it through season two. And it looks like season three is probably full steam ahead. So that, that's yeah, exciting. it's always it's always nice when creators can, you know, get their vision out and not mm-hmm. be cut short by any of the studio politics, you know. Mm hmm. So how many books will the third season encompass? Well, we don't. Oh, how many books? Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's it's one less than the last one. Was that what is that? So three uh, books. Three books. Four, four books. No, it'll four, be four yes. books. Season yeah. two is five books. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll be four books. All right, okay. ten episodes. Yeah, they go I can divide. A, they go on a submarine in one of them. That'll be fun. What spoilers? Well, I mean, you could just look at the submarine. You could just look at the book titles. And it's called, like, called, it's called the it's Yellow Submarine. submarine. It's the, <laughs> called the the Grim Grotto. That's another good one too. There's some good there's some good stuff that that's in the it's last uh, four books. So I'm I'm looking forward to it a lot. Cool. Well, we we'll have to do another episode when that comes out if we're still around. <laughs> we haven't if been. We're not we all, dead. Be dead. Well, we're I, all dead. Well, I thought we all agreed whether people liked us or not. We like us, so we would just keep doing it. I definitely do not agree to saying <laughs> no, that I like us. Like... I think I, I agree that we're just going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't comment beyond anything past that. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, check it out. Um, I think uh, even if you may not love the show, I think there's enough there that you'll find intriguing and just done really, really well, whether that could be the performances, the writing, the the set design, you know, just look at the show. Um, yeah, there's a, it's a good series. You should check it out uh, on Netflix. And it's free if you have Netflix. And it's not free if you don't have Netflix. Well, it's not free if you do have Netflix. It's, hey, it's not free regardless. <laughs> what do you mean? If you have Netflix, well, yeah, you yeah I guess. <laughs> yeah, but if you have Netflix, you don't have to. I mean, you, you're already paying for it. But you're I like don't... me, and you, and you only watch like one or two shows at a time, then you're at the moment paying to watch that show also i don't think That's netflix true. has the option to just individually purchase its shows yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like... no yeah yeah they don't release netflix. false no they false, do release netflix no, shows some, on dvd some shows like specific well shows, maybe based they'll off release the studios. This one. i don't think i've seen any of the the netflix exclusives go i thought i saw like master of none on dvd once or something I, I could be stranger wrong. things is on it is on dvd uh, i guess that's true if they have um, Cloverfield Paradox on DVD, because I want to buy me some <laughs> Cloverfield Paradox. Wait, really? Do you really want to No. That? Okay, I don't know. I didn't Is J.J. Abrams going to find a way to make series of unfortunate events in the Cloverfield They're universe? They're all part of a cl- he already has. series of Cloverfield. Cloverfield Paradox ruined events. everything. It just said everything's in a different alternate universe. Yeah, <laughs> everything. The MCU is part of the Cloverfield yeah. universe now. Too. Actually, Star Wars. That, speaking of multiple universes, so now with like Disney's streaming service and like there's other ones coming out like now it's like everything is going to have its own streaming service and it's almost going to be just like normal cable channels when we used to have cable i mean we still do but you know yeah. and, and it was just like oh we had 50 cable channels and you can go watch each one but now we're going to have 50 streaming services but we're gonna have to pay for each one somehow we've retrograded like we yeah. like like cable was free and we had all of this it wasn't free but you know you paid whatever really cheap price for everything Sean, my Sean definition of free <laughs> 
<laughs> no, everything is pretty much you have to pay for it. Everything is free to Sean. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Shine. My point being that, like, now we have to pay for, like, elite. Right now, there's Amazon and Hulu and Netflix and you know, whatever else. Like, that's as much as cable if you pay for each one of those things and everything added to it. Yeah. What's we're just going backwards? Come on. Come on. No, I agree. On, guys. I mean, what do you want me to do about that, Sean? I'm, I'm only one <laughs> just, man. You know, you close Shrek. You have some power. <laughs> <laughs> I close Shrek on Broadway. No longer does Shrek the musical have to haunt anyone's doorsteps. <laughs> done the world a service. All right, are we are we yeah. stopping this now? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're done. So thanks again for listening. And like we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, we're now available on iTunes and Google Play and all that jazz. So check us out there. Like us, subscribe, and hey. If you want to hear us talk about some show or movie or recommend anything to us that we might talk about, um, give us a give us a dear little... God, someone leave a comment. <laughs> yeah, uh, let us leave know us you're alive. Yeah, like, I'm okay um, or just email us. Liking us, but just tell us why. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't care one way or the other. I mean, I don't care if you dislike us, but don't don't like. Like send us hate mail. I don't like that. If you're gonna send <laughs> well, hate mail, mail it has it. just, send just it. like die. I hate you. Die. Like don't do that. Um, but if you did want to, you could just send it to yumchunks at gmail dot com because we'll check that as well. Feel free to contact us in any way you want. Um, but until then, and until our next episode, thanks for tuning in. And um, ba 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 ba. <laughs> now McDonald's is gonna sue us, Chris. Great. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, everybody. I can start. What? You okay? <laughs>